Smith is a testimony uh, that the Spirit can overcome all physical challenges, and she's going to tell you how she started her journey into this place. And she likes to brag that she um, has at least over 320 children, special children. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Meet the Singh, my absolute pleasure, all the way from Kolkata, India, to the stage. I stand here before you because um, 2008, October, God spoke very, very clearly to me through a verse in the Bible that I had no clue when I heard about it or I sort of dreamt about it, that what it meant. But when I opened the Bible, much later, and he had to knock me on the head like a couple of times and go look in the Bible and see what it says. And Joshua 6.22 told me that um, go into the house of the prostitute and bring her and her family out as you have promised to her. And this came at a time when I was ready to give up. I had been working with International Justice Mission for three years, and yes, I was rescuing girls, I was going into brothels, uh, just seeing the darkness in which these little girls were being sold, uh, in which prices were being put on their heads. Men were sitting in line outside their rooms without any rest. They were having client after client after client. And um, having to place these girls into government facilities which had no infrastructure, which had no services, there were no counseling, there was no one to really listen to them to address their trauma, and most of all, um, they were not being reached by the redemptive power of Christ. So just feeling the need that, you know, placing these girls in these homes and then they just run away because that is not a home that they want to be in, that's a place they want to leave. Uh, these homes have you know, huge iron bars that are pointing inwards. That is to prevent the girls from running away rather than keeping people from coming in and getting them. So um, when I was ready to give up, God showed up in the most amazing way. And following that, 2009, Partners International kind of came alongside our vision at that time was uh, to set up an aftercare home that was Christ-centered, that provided the best possible care. Uh, to these girls to bring healing, restoration, and finally reintegration back into the community. So in 2010, the first home opened in a city that is dark. Um, Calcutta has a goddess who we, they worship who is the goddess of destruction and uh, the largest probably red light districts in the world. Uh, small blocks of maybe half a kilometer, Sonagachi. You Google it, you will see it's not a big area but it has over 20 to 40,000 women who are in prostitution there, and many, many young girls who are hidden away from, you know, from the mainstream there. But if anyone has the access, anyone has the money, and they can get these little girls to come and be sold and be abused. And over the years, um, we felt the need that this is definitely an area that has to be addressed because these children have lost their childhood. Oftentimes it's hard. It's not that it's very easy to deal with children who've been through so much trauma and especially they are now adolescent girls with other issues as well. But when we see that one girl change, when we see how one child is being, you know, finds that hope and that light comes out in her life, when one child who's been so angry and hostile goes back into the brothel to just bring her things out, and then she tells me that when I was in this brothel, I used to walk down the street every day, but I never held my head up high. I always had my eyes down. But today when I leave this place with my stuff, I know I'm not coming back, and I can leave with my head up high, and I can look people in the eyes. So that is what I think, um, you know, Mahima has given to these girls. We started off thinking we'll just have one home, and for 25 girls, and that's that's all. But God's plans are different, and uh, we now have three homes, two homes for minor girls who are under the age of 18, so 35 beds, and one home for adult girls who are 18 and above. And for each one of them, I think God has touched them in very, very special ways. Uh, we've had 12 girls who've just come and accepted Christ in this one last one year, and this comes at a time where we are really not very able to be very, very free and open with the gospel with these girls because we are licensed with the government. We have uh, complaints against us that we are trying to convert them. 
But despite of that, just because the staff are Christian, they model Christ for these girls at all times, they know that these people are different. And they're different because we love them the way Christ has loved us. So it has just been an absolute wonderful journey for me. And I know that there are many friends in this room who've journeyed with me. In, so I just want to take this opportunity to say thank you. And I want to just share um, just one story with you before I end, and that is of a young girl who was married off when she was 11 years old. And uh, within a few months, her husband uh, sent her back home saying that she's too dark-skinned and she's not pretty enough. So when in India you are abandoned by your husband, it's not really the best place for anyone to be, and especially in the villages. She met this lady who lives in her village who told her, I'll give you a job. She trusted her, and she came with her to the city where she was sold into the brothels, and she was there for almost um, yeah, three years. She was 14 when she was rescued, and when she came out, uh, she was placed in a government home. Mahima didn't exist at that time, and she was pregnant. I didn't want to keep her baby but we had an opportunity to share with her just about the sanctity of life and share with her that you know she had a life within herself that she needed to look at and she then agreed and she had a beautiful baby boy and but at all times it was in her mind that you know this woman has done something wrong to me she should not do this to other girls and that was something that came back to her over and over again more so because the lady was absconding the police supposedly couldn't find her until 2011, 31st December, when she called me and said that, Auntie, this lady has come back to the village. Can you make the police go back and catch her? Because I want her to not do this to other girls, and she needs to be behind bars for some time. And police had duty on 31st night and lots of things going on, and they were not wanting to go. But then again, God works in amazing ways and you know, touching the hearts of these sometimes very hard hearts of the police officers, and they agreed on 1st of uh, January to go. They arrested her. This young girl, she's even smaller than I am, and uh, she testified boldly in a court where it's really hard for a young girl to stand up and face maybe 10, 15 lawyers who are at her one after the other, and this woman is behind bars. So in these five years, you know, five years ago, we were not getting any convictions on human trafficking. There were courts where we were told that you will never get a conviction on human trafficking in this court. But God has worked in the hearts of the, the police, the lawyers, the judges. And this, in the last five years, we've had almost 25 people who are behind bars. We've had nine cases come to conviction. Over 21 girls have gone to court and testified. But more than this, is that we have a whole family of girls who have returned back to their own families, who are now married, who have children of their own. I'm expecting five grandchildren in this year. So <laughs> that has been absolutely awesome to sit and watch. And having known where they come from, the places, the darkness in the brothels, the abuse that goes on in the brothels, having seen that, and having to now witness and you know, just journey with them through their time now when they move on with their life has just been amazing for me. And I hope I'm able to share with you the hope that is there uh, because Christ exists and Christ is there in the midst of it all. So thank you so much once again for your support and thank you so much for being here tonight and just encouraging me in my work and what I do in Calcutta and your prayers matter to me so please do keep me and my staff and my girls in your prayers. Thank you so much.